Hi, my name is Kevin Zerdrill. I'm the host of this podcast, All Eyes on Me, uh, a true story of addiction, recovery, and hope. And uh, with me again, as always, is uh, Vincent Lilly. Welcome back. Hello, how's it going? It's going great. Always great to uh, reconnect on our podcast series on your book, All Eyes on Me. Uh, I think it, we've covered uh, in the last uh, 10 episodes, uh, very deep uh, looks at different topics throughout the uh, the book and uh, today we kind of want to explore some of these uh, a little bit further as well. Um, I know a lot of questions that I, I've, I've gotten from uh, readers and, and people from the podcast is um, we know about yourself currently. I know when we look through the book we've covered some pretty uh, intense topics uh, throughout your life. Uh, a lot of them starting you know with your uh, diagnosis as a uh, infant uh, hemophilia and uh, you've gone through a couple of surgeries uh, because of that. Um, your upbringing at home and uh, sexual abuse that your family had gone through, uh, involvement, you know, with uh, the youth justice system and uh, in terms of uh, addictions that you've gone through and uh, several incarcerations, uh, federal penitentiary. And, you know, through it all, you've been through a lot. And I guess the question now is, where are you now with your life? What have you been able to now do um, since the book has come out and, and where you're at? I think people are very interested to know. Oh, well, I think uh, I think the book came at a really good time because I had already started doing a lot of things. Uh, you know, I had already started on my sobriety and uh, I was obviously as you know, currently residing, or I, at the time I was residing at the Pan Am place. And um, so uh, while I was there, I was kind of just starting to, to, to get involved in a lot of the volunteering and stuff that I wanted to be involved in. And so now time fast forward a little bit further, I'm now doing, you know, the volunteering with OPK and Mama Bear and, um, Also, yeah, uh, doing the um, presentations with the schools, uh, sometimes with the Winnipeg police. And so um, it's been pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to say that it's uh, taken a good start for sure. And I always tell people that I, this is just the beginning when they, they, they're very surprised about the things that I tell them and this is just the beginning for me. It's, it's quite remarkable. I think it really speaks to uh, the ability that there's never a point where there's that utter hopelessness that you're thinking that you can't make change, you can't turn things around. And, and truly your life story speaks to that because as we spoke about in some of the earlier podcasts at your age 38, where you're coming into your own, you're finding your own voice and who you are as a person and despite everything you've gone through over the last several uh, decades, um, here we are now. And I think that's if a, a true look at the, the hope and inspiration that that promotes to so many people. And I think uh, for a lot of people who struggle with addiction and crime and gangs and incarceration, I think uh, finding their identity is one of the biggest pieces to it because they kind of just float around, right? They don't know what they're doing. They, they kind of don't really have any real true goals. And uh, until you kind of find your identity and in, in order to find your identity, you have to want to, you know, and obviously everybody probably wants to, but, you know, to take those steps to actually do that, um, it takes, a, I think, a sequence of events to happen in your life. Uh, because like I said before, we're all good people. You know, we don't want to be doing the things that we do that are bad. It's just like, you know, it's, we get stuck in those cycles. Yeah, we do. And I, and I think one of the things that you've certainly messaged multiple times is, um, for, you know, seeking sobriety. You've been through multiple uh, treatment programs uh, throughout the years. And I think it, it kind of proves the point that it's, you never stop trying, correct? You just keep, keep at it and you may fail, you may fumble, 
but you keep going at it. And I think you entered every time with the hopes that this was going to be the change uh, to give you the opportunity. And, and truly, it does at some point. Well, I think one of the things you have to come to terms with is a lot of people, as, as much as in your face that it is, people just don't come to the terms with the fact that you're going to fail no matter what. That is part of the process and you want to fail. Obviously, you don't want to just like go out there like intentionally trying to do things that are going to hurt you or other people. But ultimately, in everything that you do, you're going to fail, you know, and ultimately you want to because it's just an opportunity for growth, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not a setback. It, it's a step forward because you're showing yeah. that you're making those attempts. Exactly. I think what I said was, uh, if you don't fail, you're not even trying. It's so true. And, you know, when people look at your relapse, um, it's, it's, not, it's not the end. It's still the beginning. Uh, and, and it's that push forward. And, and I always tell people when they talk about how much sobriety they have or whether it's a day or whether it's, a year. Um, I don't try to take away from what they have, but I also let them know that it's, it's that your the amount that you have is not what's mo- important. What's important is that you have the will and desire to change. You're you're fighting that good fight, and you're gonna want to quit. You're gonna want to give up, and you have to face that, and you have to realize that, take responsibility for that, in order to continue going on. And uh, yeah, moving forward. And I think that's a great point because certainly someone that's that's trying to you know reach sobriety, uh, change their lifestyle. There's so many components to it, but it's certainly um, as much as it is an individual effort, it's a group effort too, right? It's your support network, it's the people around you, it's your environment that's going to be um, part of that recovery process. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of addicts that are in that at in that uh, position in their in their life where they just don't want to even they don't want to quit at that point, but that's okay because we all go through that. And uh, like I said, it takes just a sequence of events to happen to to get you to that point, and ultimately. As, as deep down as you get in your addiction, it's uh, those things as bad as they might be, they're gonna teach you and they're gonna give you something to appreciate when you are doing as good as you do. What's some advice you have for someone that's uh, going through sobriety and they're sensing that, you know, maybe a, a, a relapse is gonna happen or they're starting to falter, what should they be doing at that point in time? I think the most important thing is for them to reach out and tell people how they feel. If they feel like they're going to fall down, to tell people that that's how they feel. Be honest. Um, Honestly, the most important thing is to be honest with yourself first, that you're feeling that way and it's normal to feel that way. You know what I mean? Uh, But you have to reach out, I think, because the more you stay with that, you, you stay with those thoughts on your own, it just leaves it, I'm not, uh, leaves it easier for that to happen. And even though that relapse is all part of the process, but you still want to, you know, reach out, uh, take advantage of um, strengthening your ability to reach out when you need to. And I suppose the same applies to people that are, are involved in the justice system and, and uh, incarcerations and, and that cycle. Um, and, and finding the opportunity to get away from it. And a lot of times they get away for, for a while and then circumstances come back uh, and they need to they need to do different things in their lives, right? To avoid that getting drawn back into it. Yeah, I think it just, it just comes back to the whole people, places and things when it comes to your addiction and your incarceration. Because, uh, you know, we just come become... Uh, we get into the habits, right? A lot of us are involved in the habits and routines of what we do. And like, if you're one of your routines and habits is to go to jail and be incarcerated, then when you get out, there's going to be that habit and that routine that gets you there also. So um, you need to break those 
I mean, to break those, and the only way to break them is by doing something different. You know, in order to do something you never done, you got to become someone you never been. So, a lot of people, it's just easier for them to just stay stuck in the same place. And that's what a lot of us do in life. We complain about our situation, but we don't want to do what it takes to, to change it. And you've used volunteer work as a catalyst for your own life, right? To, to draw yourself into a different way in the community that has been very successful and very grounding for you. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very key tool to, uh, to, to kind of like um, getting through those feelings of negativity about yourself. Uh, um, self-help comes from helping others. So um, the feeling that you get from doing that, it just makes you feel better about yourself. And then you can kind of like dissect the problems that you have and the issues that you have that, that have gotten you stuck in your addiction or in your incarceration to begin with. So like ultimately when you're feeling negative about yourself, you go out there, you do something good for somebody, it makes you feel good and it gives you, gets you in a better headspace in order to make the right decision to get further in your recovery or your struggle with incarceration. And I think it's often overlooked in terms of uh, the idea of volunteering. And there's so many organizations that are out there and that ability, that first step, whether you're volunteering for an hour or one day a week, it's, it's a start and you become part of a new community. Well, it's, uh, it, it ultimately, yeah, like uh, it doesn't really matter even how, how long it is or whatever, because it honestly causes a ripple effect, right? When you do the volunteer work, like it's kind of like a paid forward type thing, right? And most people uh, catch on to that and they want to do good things, right? So. Uh, you're also like uh, kind of like promoting uh, positivity and good things into your community when you do volunteering because the more that you do it, the bigger the volunteer lists and people get and more people will see it and more people will maybe want to get on. And I know for yourself, the OPK was, was a significant turning point for yourself when you became involved in that wonderful organization and, and how proud you've been to be part of that. Uh, I think every city, every town has, you know, um, organizations such as that. But again, it's taking that initiative to seek it out and show your sincerity and put the time in. Yeah. Um, I mean, like you got to understand that these organizations started somewhere, right? They start. they didn't start off with, uh, you know, 200 members. They started off small, right? And that's how it is. It's what, what, what it's all about is that you just gotta all you just gotta do all that you can do right do your best and uh all you can do is all you can do right and all you can do is enough yeah. i've always been fascinated just in terms of the connectedness as one thing leads to another for yourself and and the connections between other people and it just starts to grow and expand and that expansion is, is sort of how you described it to me when we had first met that, you know, you become an army, right? You become a force. And from that, there's that power in that to, to make change in the community and impact people's lives in such a healthy, positive way. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think that's one of the things that's made my faith so strong in myself is that, uh, you know, you pray for things and you ask for things and uh, they happen, you know, and it's hard not, it's hard to ignore that because in the past when I would ask for things and all that, it would never happen. And, uh, but for now, now I've noticed that I've spent a lot more time praying, saying thank you instead of asking for something. And I think that's uh, a huge change and a, definitely a different way of, of, looking at myself and judging how far that I have come because, you know, it's, uh, 
being thankful and being grateful for life. I know as hard as it might be for some people, it is very important because I believe that it goes out into the universe and it comes back. No, it does. It, it really does. And, um, you know, people that have come through tr significant traumas in their life, whether sexual abuse, domestic violence, um, as you mentioned, it's always at some point in your life, you have to kind of turn towards that, face it head on and deal with it. Um, you know, sports is a, is a big factor, it seems like, for people to ground themselves and, and use energy to do better. And you certainly have used that in terms of your boxing and your, your bodybuilding, that discipline in the gym um, has really helped kind of steer you, right? It kind of gives you that daily focus and that feel good about yourself, that you're doing something. Yeah, I think uh, physical activity is is uh, very important for anybody's process because uh, ultimately people don't see it, but it's, it's another part of strengthening your mind, right? You go to the gym or you go to boxing or you go to whatever it is that you're doing, you're pushing yourself to the limit, right? And uh, so, yeah, it's another way of strengthening your mind and your body. And obviously, physical activity is very important for your mental health. It all becomes part of that, right? Because then that becomes part of nutrition as well. So you're eating properly, you're getting your rest, you're getting, you're burning off that energy, and you know your body responds to that. So uh, it's something that you've been very regimented with, and uh, I certainly have always been so encouraged by seeing that 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 discipline and that desire has been so present within yourself. And that's the thing that people need to realize that it's, uh, I wasn't always that way, right? Even the best of the best, wasn't, they weren't always that way. You gotta understand as hard as it might seem in the beginning to get involved in doing those types of things, that's what you gotta do is you gotta make the start. You gotta take that step to start. And that's what I did when in the beginning, I took the step to get started. And then you just build that routine around what you're doing with the exercising or the eating and the eating. And basically, it just becomes it comes hand in hand. At the end, it's, it's a routine, right? You get involved in the routine from the eating and the working out and the exercising, and it literally it's just becomes second nature. I think it's a key piece of what you just said too. Is that it was never always like that for yourself, and we we don't want to draw assumptions that this was a lifestyle that you've always had. This is new, um, and it, it's something that you fostered and has developed um, brand new habits. Yeah, that's the thing is that it, it's, uh, it's always ourselves that gets in the way. We get, we get in the way of ourselves and we always get in our heads and start thinking negative and basically blocking ourselves from doing anything that we want to do. But uh, change is hard, right? It's like when you, you stay, stay in your comfort zone, there's no growth there and uh, it's really easy to stay there. And the hardest part is getting started. That's why I say to people, like, don't worry about going to the gym and lifting all this crazy weight. The most important part is just getting there. You know what I mean? Just make a habit of getting there. And then that's the hardest part is just getting there. Once you're there, then you can start to develop certain things. You don't have to worry about having some intricate workout schedule right away. Just work on getting there. Yep, so true. So true. What what kind of things, uh, Vincent, inspires you nowadays? When you wake up in the morning, what what's your inspiration? I think that's another good thing about volunteering is that uh, there's people that I see that are out there doing the same thing. You know, they never they never uh, fail to. They always they always like surprise me. You know, with how far people are willing to go. Um, just recently, I volunteered at a uh, safe space on Main Street, and uh, this was literally just a bar. It was a bar that uh, a family owned, and they they opened it up to the homeless. And so uh, Mitch Verbenier asked me if I'd be willing to go volunteer there, and it's uh, open from uh, 11 o'clock at night till 7, the mor 7 in the morning. And uh, so, yeah, I went and volunteered there. And these people that are there, 
it's just amazing how they were with these people, you know, like, and that's the way it should be. Like, just because they're stuck in a rut doesn't mean you treat them any different. And um, I was so surprised that these women were, you know, trying to find ways to get them help with their addiction and that, not just letting them stay there. Um, and that's what we need to do is we need to start helping them in other areas, not just uh, housing them. And so also there was a couple of people, a couple of guys from Garden Hill. Um, one guy that used to be the, the Manitoba chief of, of the chief of Manitoba came there and he was putting people up in hotels from there. And I was just like blown away by that because it's like these people need, that's all these people need, man. They need a chance. You'd be surprised at how much changes when you give somebody a chance. That, that, that speaks to so much, um, giving someone a chance, right? That's so universal and everything when you think about it. Um, but yet it's so overlooked so often that it's so important so that we, we look at everyone as the opportunity that they have a chance to. And sometimes being that person to give them that opportunity uh, is so fulfilling that, you know, it, it goes such a long way. In 2018, I um, I still had my charge for robbery with a firearm on a uh, on a drugstore, and uh, I went for my sentencing. It took them three years to sentence me. I stayed uh, out of trouble for three years. I did a lot of volunteer work in the community. I was doing everything with my family, and uh, the judge uh, they were asking seven years. Um, they were asking seven years for the robbery with the firearm. And uh, the judge looked at all the evidence and a lot of people came in to read letters from me of support. And uh, she said, what is this issue that this guy goes from going in and out of jail, in and out of jail his whole life and all of a sudden now three years, nothing. What is, what is the reason for this? And uh, so she ultimately seen it for what it was. And she gave me a chance. She gave me three years probation and a five hundred dollar fine. And they were asking seven years, and so I got a chance, and that was in two thousand eighteen, and that's when this all started. So, if she would have just sent me to prison, then I would have still been in jail now, and none of this stuff would have been possible. That's amazing. I mean, that no better description in terms of what giving a chance ultimately looks like. And wow, that, that sentencing judge altered the course of your life. And then the impact you're giving back to the community, um, it's beyond words. Yeah, and I, I'm still, I've been still trying to find her. I've been trying to get a hold of her, but I haven't been successful yet. But hopefully, you know, I'll be able to get a hold of her and let her know. I want to, just to let her know what I'm doing and what's, been, what's happened since, since that day, right? And because uh, I believe that these judges that make the right decision, they need to know, they need to recognition in order to strengthen their decision making in, in the justice system. I truly hope you get that opportunity because it's so true. Um, they often never know the outcomes unless something goes horribly wrong. Yeah, it's usually negative, you know, usually they usually see a negative effect of the decision that maybe they made or didn't make. And so, and now they use this, my court case, they use it for precedence, like in other cases, because, you know, like they need to understand people change. And that's the other part of it. People do change. Um, who we are today isn't who we were yesterday. And we have to have an open mind to that and give someone that chance and the opportunity. Um, and I think that's always been your message right from the start, right from the reason for, for the book, for your book was you give someone a chance to change and improve. Look at the marvelous things that they can give back. It's, it's tremendous. Well, any decision that you make is gonna have some sort of ripple effect, right? So think about it that way, you know, whether it be negative or positive. I mean, if I would have went to jail for seven years, in prison for seven years, I'd still be incarcerated and I'd still be, oh, I would be so angry. I would have been so angry. 
and myself and all that. And it just would have, it would have just probably, I'm not sure what would have happened, but uh, it would have, wouldn't have been good for sure. No, not, well, you cert certainly we know that you would not have been doing the opportunities you have in the volunteer work and working with kids and every piece of society. And, and that's, that's the true loss, right? Not just for your own life, but for the influence on everybody else. And in today's society, we're all looking to grab onto something that can inspire us and, and motivate us and pick us up when we fall down. Um, and I think that that's certainly been a huge part that you've been doing. And ultimately, it would have never met you. So the book would have never been written. <laughs> well, that's just it. You know, I, I always said fate, destiny, there's, there was a purpose for us to meet and come across and, and, and the way we met at the boxing gym, um, totally by chance and you striking up a conversation and here we are, you know, um, to be able to discuss your book, your story uh, and the, the tremendous impact it's had on readers. Um, I'm, I'm still shaking my head by it. I'm still astonished and, and humbled to you know you and i have walked this journey together and it's it's just amazing seeing how it just continues to to you know prosper and flourish and the thing is that everything happens for a reason i believe and it's how you react to that reason that's important yeah, it really is it really is and and you know sometimes it's just a matter of stepping back and and looking at opportunities and realizing what what you can or can't do and then once you can't do say well let's let's try anyway and see what happens with it take a chance right and we took a chance with the book and your life story it's you, you know you you held nothing back and you open yourself up and uh it takes courage and it's certainly um you know moving forward you're being able to use things in such a positive healthy way um it's you know it's an honor for i think anyone who's had a chance to speak to you or listen to you um, there's so much to take away from our conversations and the, what's written in your book. And I think the effect that it's having is exactly what I needed and what I wanted because people are thanking me for the book and being honest and telling my story. And I tell them that uh, it was a part of the process that needed to be done in order to help me also. So in order, I might be helping others with the book, but it's also helping me. It truly is, it truly is. And I, I always think back to, you know, when we first talked about it and your enthusiasm for it and really, yeah, it has done so much for myself and for you and everyone else. Um, it's, it's certainly a, a treasured piece and, and, and truly um, there's so much more to come from all of that, but, you know, I think it heals everybody in their own ways too. And I think that that's such an important part of it. Yeah, definitely. You know, so as we said on the, on the title, All Eyes on Me, and it has specific meaning for you, but uh, truly the, the, the subtitle of Addiction, Recovery, and Hope absolutely just hits home. It truly is all about hope and, and having that opportunity, that chance. I definitely agree. Well, I really want to thank you again for a fantastic uh, podcast. Uh, we have our 12th and, and final coming up, and uh, we're definitely going to make the most of that as well because we still have so much more to share and discuss together, Vincent. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much.